Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching another episode of The Creative Truth. Today, I'm with Annalise Broad, one of my oldest and dearest friends. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and let you introduce yourself because you are a woman of many talents, <laughs> interests, and activities. So tell us a little bit about who That's you are, true. what you do. <laughs> I have to keep them all straight, but thank you so much for having me. I've been really excited all yeah, week dude. To, to be here with you. Yeah, it's so exciting thanks for coming to on. See this podcast taking off. I love mm -hmm. it. Yeah, um, well, I have had, I guess I can't really explain where I'm at without kind of giving some background on how I got here. Um, but I have been uh, working in marketing in different uh, facets of it for years. And most recently I was working in the event marketing and, um, Earlier this year, I got let go, and it was just a total shock of the system for me. Um, ended up being probably the best thing that's ever happened because it gave me space to really pursue some things I've been wanting to do for a really long time. And um, I always knew I wanted to end up on my own and be an entrepreneur, but never felt like I found that perfect niche that really excited me, or if I found it, it was temporary and never felt tangible for me or something I could hang on to. And um, over the summer, I was home and visiting a, um, a flower shop my sister worked in, and they had some plants for sale, and things just started to click into place, um, and it ended up, um, it led me to opening this plant shop in my house, basically, um, and COVID's kind of been a great time to have this and have the low overhead of it and be able to offer just really awesome prices and create connections with people that also love to talk about plants and um, build relationships with people more than I ever expected through that. Um, and then simultaneously, I also have uh, my marketing consulting business, Building with Broads. Um, and that's been a really fun business that uh, also kind of fell into my lap. I think I've always worked with women entrepreneurs, um, never intentionally, but it's just kind of always worked out that way. And um, this business has evolved over time from doing, you know, everything from social media to building websites um, and ads and things like that to um, what I realized I love doing, and that's more of the coaching and consulting side of things. And I think really being a champion for women business owners, especially, uh, you know, people just like me that jump into this and say, I want to do this thing. I have no idea how to do it, but I'm going to figure it out. And I love to be that person that um, can kind of help be that rock of, okay, well, let's come back and make a decision together and figure out what makes sense going forward and things like that. So those are a couple of the projects I'm working on right now. Yeah, it's, I mean, like you, I think like at my core, I'm a teacher and I like, I'm mm -hmm. like very patient and I just like to connect people and I have no problem sharing my knowledge. And that's kind of where this podcast stems from is that just like, I know so many cool people doing cool things at, like you. And so I want to connect you with other people who like, either like vibe with you or want to do what you want to do or whatever. So it's the same kind of thing. Like that's how, that's exactly the root of this podcast was just basically telling other people or like connecting people and teaching other people who are maybe earlier on in their career. If they're in marketing or PR, the photographers, videographers, I spoke with a VFX artist, uh, which would be last week's episode. And, um, and I mean, there's just so many ways to, get out there and make money, especially now. And we're learning that through COVID that um, like a lot of this stuff can be done from your house. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so we're, so for some background too, for our listeners, we're both from upstate Syracuse, New York, and mm -hmm. I now live in Savannah, Georgia and tell the folks where uh, you're based out of. I'm in Denver, Colorado now. <laughs> for how long? But, uh, oh, I've been here almost six years. It's crazy. It's really crazy to think that went by so fast. I, know. <laughs> I think I've lived three lifetimes out here too. So it's just been, uh, yeah, very quick. <laughs> but yeah. good. Um, no, but I think too, like you said, just connecting people, it's always been my favorite part about business and why I gravitated even, um, you know, I went to school at Syracuse for entrepreneurship. And I think one thing that program did really well is creating um, a huge base for networking with the city, with programs. Um, and that, that was always my favorite part was going to the networking events and saying, and, you know, meeting somebody that's doing this and knowing somebody that does that and being the person that is, oh my gosh, you guys would be great. Like you should meet and watching projects unfold from there. So um, 
it's just been a really, yeah, it's just, that's my favorite part of, I think it boils down to marketing, but I think the coaching and consulting. So, mm-hmm. And you're kind of like born into an entrepreneurial family too. You want yeah, to talk for a little better, bit about for that? worse. Yeah, 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 both my parents own their own businesses, which is great, but you know, there's always the ups and downs. I mean, you know, your family is similar and um, so you watch that. I think too, you know, and this goes back to something else you were saying about starting businesses in your home right now and kind of just working with from the ground with what you have. It's been a really fun project and experiment for me to start this business kind of on the side that um has become a lot of my income, but kind of started on the side and just have it be fun and have this challenge of, okay, I can put $200 towards it this week. I can put $300 towards it this week. Um, but really challenging myself to, to never take, you know, credit or, uh, taking a leap maybe that I can't fund yet myself and finding ways when I want to make those bigger jumps to say, okay, here's what I need to do to get there myself this week. Um, you know, so I'm never going to the bank. And I think, you know, that comes back to having an entrepreneurial family and watching the ups and downs of that. Um, and just knowing how challenging that can be and how sometimes, you know, you get yourself into a place where your back's against the wall and you don't have a lot of choices. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the big things I've thought about going into this and structuring my business is that I always want it to be something that I never at the end of the day owe anything to anybody else. Might not be doing all that well, but I can always go get a job at the grocery store. I have no shame, you know, but I don't owe anything to anybody else. So I'm never going to keep pushing this forward, maybe beyond what I should be doing. Or, and I think COVID has been a really good lesson of that. It's been an awesome opportunity. There's a lot of people that are home. They're wanting plants. They're wanting that good energy in their house right now. Yeah. Um, so it's been a great opportunity for that. But if things are to shift, you know, if trends change and things, you know, plants and the accessories that come with it aren't as popular, then I want to be in a position to pivot my business without, uh, you know, feeling stuck and, um, you know, not being able to jump ship when it's time to move on and evolve or figure out something else. So. Sure. Yeah. There's been a lot of people, of course, that have been furloughed and have lost their jobs and mm-hmm. COVID has been really, really tough for a lot of people, but but entrepreneurs are are always looking at things as opportunities rather than setbacks, or maybe they are a setback, but that's just part of what we do, really. So it's it's like, and it's funny every time I talk to you, you drop a little nugget of of knowledge that I didn't think about. And the last <laughs> time we were texting, you mentioned the founder slump, and you said that like you had kind of gone through this period of you were super productive super productive super productive and then all of a sudden it just like fell out Um, (laughs) and I I like knew that was a thing but I never I never like thought that like it's a thing that people talk about um and I I I go through that all the time so it's like yeah um tell me like recently that happened to you Yeah. Well, and there's a lot of shame and guilt, I think, attached to that of like, there's this image that as founders or as like entrepreneurs that we're always cranking at a hundred percent and we're playing at a million and, you know, we have endless energy and we're working from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. every night on a good day. And, you know, it's just like, that's not realistic. That's not how people get work done. That's not how you're productive. That's not how you bring your best every day. Um, So I think I kind of went through this slump and it was, um, I think part of it was my body telling me, okay, you need to like slow down and be taking care of yourself a little bit more. And part of it came with, um, we thought we'd been exposed to COVID. And so we were just laying low, I think at the house anyway, I mean, we're all laying low now, but even more so of, um, you know, going on less frequent walks at peak times and things like that. And even just like the joy of going to the grocery store now, you know, we're ordering groceries and things that just, just to be safe. And, um, I think for me too, I do better when I'm busy and keeping myself busy. And when I'm not busy, it's really easy to fall into that slump. So I think it was the perfect storm, but it was a really good lesson and realization for me of just, um, reminding myself that, you know, you go through these ups and downs. And I think, you know, we were talking about this just recently, and now I'm kind of on the peak of coming out of that. And I think what comes out of that for me, especially as a creative person, is a lot of ideas. And I think that's even more prevalent for creative people to have these kinds of highs and lows, if you will. 
um, I don't really think of them, I guess, as highs and lows, but um, periods of kind of like drastic product productivity and then they drop off a little bit. And whenever I come out of those periods of rest, it's like a mini hibernation. And I think I come out of it reinvigorated and with new ideas and ready to run in a thousand directions um, and with the energy to do so for a while until I need to kind of go recharge the battery. So. Yeah, I struggle with burnout a lot because I I saw this meme the other day. Uh, I love memes, of course, but <laughs> it said like it said like I I can't finish this task until I go take a break, and then it shows the person taking a break. It's like I can't relax until I finish my task, and there's like this loop of like, and especially yeah, especially when I was younger, I definitely felt like I mean I still do, but like. I'm more forgiving of myself. I used to feel this feeling yes. of like, I need to be writing or playing music or taking photos or like doing something at, all the time, all the time. And anytime mm -hmm. I was like, I'm gonna go out for beers or I'm gonna like sit on the couch and watch uh, the whole season of Stranger Things, whatever, yeah. like <laughs> start to start to finish. Like, that's okay. Now that I'm like, now that I like, I also recognize that that is like part of the natural cycle. And I think like you touched on something interesting too, that like your body was actually giving you the signal that like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, it's crazy how if you listen to yourself, you can actually be like, I don't need to be 100% efficient all the time. It's okay. Yeah. Like, not only that, but yeah, like, I think I'll get a lot more done if I give in to myself, you know, that voice and say, okay, I guess this is what you need. And you wonder, I guess for me, it's like how much of that comes from out external pressures and expectations. Right. And especially I don't, for me, at least I find myself having that, I need to be doing something all the time or I'm feeling guilty and like not even, even just reading a book or doing something that maybe would be deemed productive. Um, you know, if it's not like on the list, then it's, it doesn't count. Right. And that's just not true. Um, so I think, you know, it's just, it's kind of, it's important to listen to that voice. And also you find yourself being more productive when you are more in tune in that way. And I think finding, um, you end up doing more than I, I guess sometimes I expected I would get done in a day when it's like I'm kind of in rhythm with myself, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, when you, it's almost mm -hmm. like when you structure yourself too much, whether that's your business or just like your, your day or your vacation, like you, you almost like restructure creativity and the opportunity for to pivot or to reinvent yourself or whatever out of to like adapt out of your schedule. So sometimes just being like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's right. Like it's not on my list, yeah. but like, <laughs> I, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to go for this walk or go on this little trip or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, whatever that is. Yeah. Totally. I, I often think like, I don't need to learn such and such because you know, so-and-so does that and I'm the video guy and I'm the photographer, but then like, but then when I'm sitting there and I'm like painting, I'm like, I'm not ever going to be a painter, but like, I'm having fun. Like I'm enjoying mm -hmm. this. So I'm just going to go with it. And like. And fun and creativity. I feel like that's where you're able to draw on that for so many other things. And it gives you so much more energy with your, your own craft, you know, things they are, you are going to do and put it into the world. So. So I want to say you're like a really big inspiration for me because, and I mean, in a lot of ways, but in particular, you've never been one to like sell yourself short on your goals and like your, and you like what you want out of life because like some people could look at it as a fault, but I, I look <laughs> at the strength that you're just like, uh, I want this. And then it's like, life is like, no, you need to like conform to fit this shape. And you're like, <laughs> that's not going to work for me. I'm going to go figure out another way. <laughs> I'm going to redraw the shape. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and like, I have always felt like I've been a little more um, conservative in my decision, career, career path and um, career decisions and just like life decisions, but I'm getting to be more where like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to like concede on what I consider to be important. 
And like, I just want to hear from you. Why is it so important to go for shoot for the moon to just like, don't back down and to just be like, here's what I know I want. And like, if you don't like it <laughs> too bad, like I'm, I'm going for it anyway. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. It doesn't always feel that way, I will say. Um, I don't know. I honestly think that this is one of those um, maybe nature versus nurture things a little bit. Um, and I fall a little in a little bit of both. I've kind of always been, I was always a headstrong kid. I was always stubborn. I was always I was always pretty determined and when I made my mind up about something and I think I'm a pretty easygoing person. I'm probably one of the more easygoing people I think you could meet. But when I make my mind up about something, like watch out if you're in, if you're in the path, like you're going to get run over um, or come along, but those are your choices. So um, I think, you know, for me, and I think, I think I struggle with this most recently leaving, um, you know, a, a corporate job, a nine to five, a, well, it was never a nine to five, but you know, a job that was, you know, had a description Stable. and exactly. Um, I've never totally struck out on my own. So this has been a really interesting time for me to kind of redefine that self image and, um, to really embrace it and kind of fully decide that. I don't know, selling plants really isn't something you just usually pick up on a Tuesday, but that's kind of how it happened for me. Um, you know, it just, I think that it's just something I've decided I'm going to overcome and I've always been a lifelong learn learner. So that hasn't intimidated me knowing that I'm going to have shortcomings. Um, and I think, you know, you say this all the time so perfectly that I need to take my own advice often and it's really humbling having clients. Um, I think, you know, I, I've seen this through the energy thing as well of needing to take rest when it's time to rest and get things done when you have deadlines. Um, but also with not being afraid to try something new or to decide that this is the path I want to go and not stop until, you know, that goal is reached. You know, you might have to try it six ways to Sunday, but we're going to get there. Um, and it's been a really good reminder of having these clients throughout, um, kind of reminding me as I'm telling them that this is also needing to drill back into my own head of, um, okay, maybe this isn't the right way, but, uh, if that's the end goal, then there is a way to get there because at least for me, I, I don't believe that you can conceive something impossible. Um, I just don't think that that exists. Uh, it's, which is, I know is a little outlandish for some people, but I think that if you can really conceive that something can exist and you can imagine what that's going to be like and feel like to have it, then there's a path to get there and you just have to be willing to be determined and figure that out. So. I feel like that's a Disney quote. Did you say something <laughs> like that? If you can believe you can achieve or something. I don't know. Wait, that is, I think, a Disney tagline. When you wish upon a star. I don't know. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> uh, I, don't take my video down, please. Um, so, so for better, for worse, uh, of course, when you're younger, it's hard to, to know what the future is going to hold. But, but for better, for worse, when you look back on your life and your career, more about your career, like what were some of the good and bad things that helped define your career, whether they can be narrowed down to like a single moment in time or even just like a single relationship or a period of your life? Have there been like really solid touch points? Um, no, honestly, I think for me, it's always been like really fluid and sometimes <laughs> I say fluid, but probably more like a pinball machine of um, we're going to be here and now we're going to be here and now we're going to do this and we'll be back to this and we'll come back here and I'm going to leave something over here and um, oh, throw the pasta on the, against the wall and yeah, kind of like paint the sticks. picture and we'll mm -hmm. exactly. Um, so I, but I think that everything I've done has kind of led me perfectly to where I am. And I've done a lot of, I've done a little bit of this and a little bit of that in almost every realm of marketing, I feel like that I could probably be in, um, you know, whether it's been helping my parents with their businesses from promotional products in a more standard um, type business in an arts and magazine or working with, you know, one of my big first jobs in marketing was um, working for another friend of ours, mom and her travel company. And that was an awesome opportunity because she kind of just got, let me do whatever I thought would be best for the company in some ways. And, um, 
it was just a really great experience to kind of get my feet wet and try a bunch of different things. So I think that was a huge moment for me. Um, and then I think up to most recently, you know, getting let go from my job, it was such a wake up call of, you know, I've been living by everyone else's rules for a really long time. And kind of like you mentioned, I'm not, I'm not really one to conform to other people's rules. And I think I've always struggled with that in a typical job. And I have never felt so uh, true to myself than working for myself and going out on my own. And um, not that it's been easy, but I've never found such easy success at the same time, if that, if that makes sense. Um, not that it hasn't come with hard work and failure and all of that, but um, it, it, I think it just inherently feels right. So that it just makes it a little bit more natural. Do you believe in failure? No, <laughs> not really. Yeah, it's just know. it's just another uh, another setback, but that's it is. Uh, I heard something interesting the other day that I loved about failure because I thought it spoke to my beliefs really well, and that was that when Martin Luther King was in college, um, his uh, public speaking teacher I think either failed him or gave him a C and told him that he would never be a powerful public speaker because of his the way he spoke. So. Wow. Yeah, I was I was like, that's a really amazing way to frame up how failure is just someone else's definition of you doing something. So you got to find your people and your tribe and not listen to anybody else that's going to say you can't do that. Yeah, I it's like um, social media and, you know, that extends to podcasts and YouTube videos. What you see is like the. Um, just the the best version of something yeah. and um and really there's so much more depth to that and so much work that goes into little things like whether it's public speaking or or podcasting yeah. and and like what I've struggled with uh accepting and also understanding is that not everyone that listens to this or that listens to some people just won't like the look of my face or the sound of my voice and uh, some days it's me, but uh, but like that's okay because there are other people that are in the Tyler tribe, that are in the Creative Truth tribe, and in the Annalise tribe, and those are the people I want to attract, and like those are the people I want to surround myself with, and I want yeah. to elevate them, and I want them to elevate me, and um, so I yeah I feel that one hundred percent. It's so true. And I think, you know, it's so easy to say, oh, they're not in my camp and that voice is louder, but it's, it's a choice to listen to that versus, you know, the other. And it's, it's definitely where you place your attention. That is where your energy goes. So you have to be careful where to place your attention. Of course, easier said than done, because that is one of the most difficult things of being an entrepreneur. You know, you're going to have more people that from afar look like they're not interested in what you're doing than the people that are really excited about it. Um, what tools do you use to stay organized? Hmm. Um, that's a great question. I am a hand writer. Um, that just it helps me remember things. It really resonates with me. I'm a big planner person. Um, I handwrite my planner pretty much every day and I try to color block my time too. Um, speaks to my kind of OCD and my creative side of getting to see the nice less in colors. But um, I think that's really a big thing. And then honestly, I'm just a classic Google Drive kind of person. Uh, if I have a thought, an idea, see a photo that inspires me, I will create a folder within a folder and title it so I can get back to it when I'm thinking of strange keywords that made me remember it. Um, and honestly, those are the two big things. I've struggled with that, trying to find a good thing. I've tried everything. Um, you know, I've used everything from Asana and just almost, gosh, everything, Evernote to throw it back a little ways, you know. Um, and I've, I've come back to handwriting almost every time. It's always what just keeps things simple for me. So. Yeah, I think there's probably something to be said about the tangibility of it, like it physically yeah. exists. And I know there's something about when you take notes, it's actually not how it works for me. I actually mm. very, I, I, I did take a couple notes today, but most of the time I'm, I'm almost all digital. And even through school, I was never really, really? Uh, somebody that, but I mean, it's really just kind of 
discovering what works for you and then totally. and then like going with that and like i know my memory like i'm always thinking about so many things i like to pluck like in the harry potter you know pluck that memory out yes and put it that in is the, me to a t yes <laughs> and then i'm like if it's not in my if it's not on my calendar it's not going to happen so if you don't oh, see totally. it there i'm not going to show up but i could set an appointment six months from now for 9 a.m at starbucks on bay street and I'll be there. Yeah, I'm the same way. So yeah, I guess I'll, I use my calendar and I'll use the note taking app on my phone just for, I mean, that thing is for Mark Cuban picked it up. It'd be set everyone else up for life. There's a lot of ideas in there. <laughs> uh, let's see. So um, do you think it's uh, worse? It's probably a loaded question, but... <laughs> But uh, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of people who have a stable job and COVID has, of course, provided people with the opportunity, aka laid people off, which is unfortunate. But um, there's a lot of people that do have a steady job that they hate and they've been there for a long time. They've been there for, and they're dreaming about if I, if only I could become an actor or um, you know, become a photographer, an artist or whatever, like what's some advice, words of advice to them? Hmm. Yeah. I think, you know, I think about this a lot of my former self of, I wish I had just started, you know, I wish I had just done a little something decided. And I think a big, the most important piece of that is, um, it can't just be anything. Uh, it needs to be something that makes you happy. And I think that's one of the, it, the, probably the most important thing about starting your own business or creating a side hustle. You know, you're doing it in your free time. You're doing it when it sucks. You're probably working long hours to get things going. Um, you need to be excited about it. It needs to be something that lights you up. It needs to be something that you say, okay, I'm okay missing dinner with my friends or you know, not reading this book that I'm really excited about, or, you know, having this, you know, relaxing me time that I had thought I was going to have tonight with my partner, whatever, because I'm excited about this and I need to, I want to spend time going to do it. So I think that really is the biggest thing. Um, of course, easier said than done. I think that's what was one of the things that held me back for a long time is that I, it was always, I knew kind of like a fleeting excitement. So it was hard for me to invest heavily in it because I knew it wasn't going to hold my attention long term. So I think that's really important. Also a loaded question, but what do you think some of the things are that um, people are afraid of when it comes to taking the leap of faith? Hmm. Well, I think it's hard to speak for anybody else, but I can speak for myself and say that I think the thing that held me back the most was fear of uh, fear of failing. And I mean, we just said, you know, I don't really believe in failure and I don't, um, you know, I think every, you know, quote unquote failure is an opportunity really to learn something and it was meant to be. But um, I think that boils down to really putting yourself out there. So I think I was really afraid to let, you know, friends and family know that I'm striking out on my own or doing such and such project that all at the end of the day, if it works, if it doesn't, if it sucks, if it does something offensive, it all comes back to me. Um, and I think I was just really afraid of putting myself out there and, um, knowing that this business venture, whatever it is, was connected back to me. And really, I think now when I take, when I think about that, I take a step back and I, I look at that and it, I really think, you know, God, how self-centered, right? Like no one really cares what I'm doing or, uh, you know, spends much of their time of their day at all wondering what Annalise Proud has been up to lately and is her business <laughs> succeeding or failing or, you know, I wonder what her sales are and also no one knows. So who cares? And it took me a really long time to get over that. But um, I, so I think that's a, a big thing. And then um, I think also just, you know, finding like we talked about your tribe and you need to have a couple people around you that are going to cheerlead you on, give you you know, the honest truth when you need to hear it. And um, yeah, yeah, you've always been such an awesome partner. I think, you know, whenever I have bad days, I reach out to you. I think, you know, talking about the founder slump, but like you're one of the first people I think about 
Um, cause I know that you're motivated and you're working on your projects. And I think, you know, surrounding yourself with a group of people that do that is so important. It's that, you know, it comes down to you're the, you're the summation of the five people you spend the most time with. And I had a really powerful moment a few weeks ago where I was kind of thinking about that and I was feeling down and, um, having this like comparing myself to others moment. And I was thinking about like calling a girlfriend up and I was realizing that the four girls I would call in those situation in situation are all just badass female business owners, like every single one of them. And I had this moment of like, well, I'm not going to call them and bother them for this because this is child's play and I can handle this. And even just knowing that and thinking about that, and I could answer all the questions, you know, how are you? You know, I tell them this is what's going on. I'm not feeling, you know, I'm having this comparing moment. I'm not good enough, blah, 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 blah. Every single one of them would have said the same thing. And it would have been, why are you spending your time comparing yourselves to them? No one else matters. You're in your own lane. What's really holding you back? It's not about other people. Something's going on with you. So let's figure that out and move on. And it was just a really, I think a really good, you know, realization that, um, I'm surrounded by these people that will keep me pushing and motivating. And it's so important to have that. Um, for me, the moment when I realized that no one cared, which is what you <laughs> said, yeah. was, was absolutely liberating because I always felt, felt that I was held to some very high standard of, oh, Tyler's going to go to Los Angeles and be working in the movie industry, and he's going to buy yeah. an island for us all to live on and support all of us. You're still doing that, though, right? And it, and it, could, it, could, it could happen. <laughs> but what I realized is that the only one that actually, like, thought that I had to do that was me. No one actually, no one else actually ever like expected anything because they love me for who I, like the people that love me, love me for who I am. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if I climb Mount Olympus, like they don't care. They, they, they're not gonna be like, you let us down. And so it's the only one that was holding me to that such a high standard was me. And then when I realized like, that, that no one else is thinking about how the podcast is going or like how his book is coming along, whatever. It's like, oh, then I can actually just do whatever I want. And it really was like a, like a breath out. And then it's almost kind of freed me up to, to like, I'm not holding myself to such a high standard. And so I'm like, really like, it's not like lowering my expectations. That's what I thought it was when I was younger. I was like, people just let go of like their, of their goals. Sure. And then really what it is, is you realize like none of that matters because even if you did yeah. get rich and even if you did get to the, everyone will be like, cool T like, great. Like, yeah. Anyone that does matter at that point is going to be the ones that, say yeah okay we knew you'd always figure it out are you happy <laughs> you know yeah and they're the, gonna ask the important questions and the people that like fluff you up when you're rich and famous or whatever they're just blowing smoke up your ass anyway and they're not the people mm -hmm. that and so you can lose sight of you can lose sight of like what it what's important in the first place anyway um so yeah for me that didn't come till i was like in my late late 20s like Rec fairly recently and then I was like yeah. oh I'm not settling like nothing I thought was important matters yes. <laughs> it doesn't matter and then it's like that's not a bad feeling that's like a good thing so yeah it's on so that true <laughs> on that subject when you were looking at school and you were 17 18 years year years old whatever I have a pretty interesting like path that got me to where I am but but what were your, like, what did you think you would do? What were your career ambitions? Oh my God, I was confused. I didn't know. I didn't know. I think I always knew I wanted to run my own business, but I never had any idea what that would look like. Um, I went to school in New York City to start. I went to a small liberal arts school called Marymount Manhattan, and I was going to school for um, international studies, 
which was an awesome opportunity, but I thought I wanted to be a humanitarian, you know, I wanted to go work for the UN or, um, you know, do something more government oriented and on the humanitarian side. And then I realized I could have a lot more impact if I was just successful in life. And instead of just trying to deal with the system, I was going to create my own system because the system's broken. And um, I remember having this profound realization while I was attending General Assembly at the UN and just realizing that this system would never get me to where I wanted to be or why I was or would align with why I was there at the end of the day. Um, so I decided that I was going to go to business school. And I took a few business classes there, and I think the program was kind of in its infancy at the time, and it just wasn't what the school was known for. And that's what led me to transferring to Syracuse. And I got into both the business school and the communication school for advertising and entrepreneurship, which ended up being, you know, kind of this perfect marriage of new ventures and marketing for me. But even I remember being in school and having no idea what I wanted a job to look like. Um, I'm one of those people that I think you could call an introductory light where I could do so many things. I mean, at one point I thought I wanted to be a lawyer um, and I could see myself doing so many things. I could see myself working in a totally creative field. I could see myself working in real estate. And I think at the end of the day, I'll probably do a little bit of all those things um, in some capacity and you know, some facet that suits me. But um, I think that was another big thing is realizing that I didn't have to be in a traditional job and I didn't have to play by the rules of this is what you do. You graduate college and now you get this job and you stay in that job until you're 62 years old and then you get to retire if you've been a good little girl, you know. And I realized that that really wasn't going to be um, my path, that I was going to have a lot of ups and downs. And I also think I saw my parents, you know, bringing this back to what we were talking about earlier, work so hard. I mean, even to this day into their 60s, and I want to create a different path. You know, if I'm going to work for myself, if I'm not going to totally sell out to a corporate company, then I'm going to have, I want to be on a better path than that. Otherwise, I'm going to sell out and get out of there as fast as I possibly can. So um, I think that was kind of a big I don't know, realization that I wasn't going to have a path and I was never really going to figure out what I was going to be or have this profound moment of, you know, I'm meant to do this in my life. Um, I think my more profound moment was realizing that I wasn't going to have a path and that I wasn't meant to do any one thing. I was meant to do a lot of different things. And I think that's part of the reason I love coaching so much is because I kind of get to dabble in all these worlds that I would never otherwise have the credentials to actually operate in. Um, you know, uh, one of my clients right now is a chiropractor and I love working with her because I get to learn a lot about, um, the body and chiropractic. And so it's really fun to, while I'm writing these marketing emails, also get to learn a little bit about the background of that. And I think that's one of the things I love about it is having this educational opportunity. Um, my, uh, i my, I'm going to have my dad on the podcast at some point too. Oh, good. I can't wait for that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, um, I think that it is kind of a generational thing that our generation is going like, well, I'm working for myself, but why? Oh, it's for more freedom? Well, I'm like being owned by my business or whatever. Yeah. And so it's like, well, why? Because I'm passionate about this. Why do I want to be a humanitarian? And so I think our generation, I also think that because we watched our, parents or family go through the great recession as we were yeah. like teenagers and and you know just graduating i had just graduated high school um, yeah. um it's forced us to be like well if i ever lost everything what would i do and so we kind of don't have that sense of like i'm going to be in this job for 30 years you know i'm going to quit yeah. television and become like a uh, english teacher it happens totally yeah that's, that's a specific example <laughs> Um, I, I want to do today's spelling bee. Uh, I'm going to guess. I-N-T-R-A-D-E-X-T-R-I-A-L-I-G-H-T. Did you say the word intradextrialite? I think so, yeah. I never heard that before. Um, I might have made it up. <laughs> I, had to, I, had to, I, had to, I was like, oh, wow, that's, that's a new one. But you said as somebody that's like could do a lot of things that are multifaceted? Yeah, and I think... 
not only do I have interest, but I think I have a skill set that I could I could talk myself into getting most jobs probably. Oh I mean, yeah. Without needing a piece of paper to do it, uh, I could probably get myself in the door somehow. Um, That's a great piece of I advice think, too. I think. Yeah, and I, I think you're like this. You know, you you're like, well, I've done a little bit of this and I've done a little bit of that, so it makes a part here, and here we go. Let's we could do this, and here are some of my ideas, and. Um, you know, I think to being people, people, it's easy to, to get excited about things and get people excited about your ideas. And, um, I think also like, I would never be happy being one set thing. Um, like a weird thing about me. I love accounting, but I would never want to be an accountant. You know, I would never be able to do the same thing all the time. Um, even if it's on different projects and for different companies. So. Yeah, I'm the same way we are. And we've talked about this in the past, like we're a, a lot we're very similar in a lot of ways too. Like even when I find what I was meant to do, that's like mm -hmm. what I was meant to do for, you know, a couple of years. And then yes, right? the thing, so. it's a little <laughs> it's like, like ca career um, uh, AD, ADD a little bit. Totally. I like to think of it as like, we're just continuously growing. So we have to, you know, Try on new shoes all the time. <laughs> shed, our, shed our skin and, and move on. Exactly. Do, you, exactly. do you have Do you have like a big, hairy, audacious goal or two? Like some things that you're that would be really, really cool. To, like I'd love to make a movie someday. But uh, oh, I love that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I have like a lot of maybe medium-sized goals that build up into that little goal. Um, like I'd love to have a real estate empire and have I know this is something we've talked about since probably high school but you know have properties all over the country and um, not only be able to rent them out but be able to gift them to people you know that I know need a vacation or need to go there and then also be able to travel a lot myself and um, you know I'd love to make you know make a lot of money in the next few years of my life and then if I choose to have a family get to spend a lot of time with my family I think that's something that um, you know and my parents are amazing like truly like your parents the best parents I could have possibly ever had on this planet I couldn't imagine better but um you know I'm from a big family and with that you have to provide for a big family and my mom was always around but there's also four of us always around so um it was hard to have a lot of like dedicated time and that's something that I think I I would want to be able to give to my children so um I think things like that are kind of in my in my near future goals of things I'd like to be able to do and um I'd love to be able to travel and do service travel um we've been talking about this we've been watching a lot of Anthony Bourdain lately just having our wanderlust being trapped in the house and um you know being able to travel to some of these faraway places but also um being able to do it in a way that we can give back to the places that we go to and not just you know be a convenient tourist but I and I think you know you can do that at any level of travel at all um, it's so easy to find a way to just give back to local people um, I think that's like that's something that I'm really looking forward to and then in the near future as well cool is college <laughs> is college is college necessary for what you do no not at all not uh, at all uh, if you could go back would you still get the degree um, it's so hard to say because I really believe that everything happens for a reason. And, um, I loved my experience. I would do it so differently if I could go back. Um, How so? I would wait. I would travel for a few years. I wouldn't have gone right to school. I probably would have gotten a trade right away and made some money so that I wasn't so in debt right now with school. Um, I just would go about it a lot, way different. Um, and I would take all of those like extra classes and I would audit things that were fun just because it'd be cool to learn about space and take a history of music and all these things that, uh, you know, when you're 19, 20, you decide partying or socializing is a lot more important than, you know, taking all these really cool nerdy extracurriculars that now I would kill for the opportunity to get to do and, you know, going to see every speaker on campus and, um, you know, just all the things that the univer uh, university provides and not having to worry about having a job while going and doing it. So. So tell me more about Plant Prod. 
Um, okay. Well, I think it, the idea kind of hit me like a brick to the head, um, which was kind of a fun experience of all of a sudden realizing. Um, but I was, like I said, I was up, I was home in upstate New York visiting a plant shop that my sister worked at and they had some plants there. And, um, you know, there's plant stores here in Denver and, but most of them aren't selling plants and pots together. And so that was kind of part of my idea. And then it led me to thinking about the, the fact that there aren't a lot of stores that kind of sell a full package. And what I mean by that is not only the educational piece, but also um, the accessories that go with it. So things like fertilizers and um, I'm working on this uh, kind of launch of plant climbers. So for climbing plants that uh, grab onto something um, and just doing some cool designs for that. So I'm really excited. Those will be coming out in the next week. So hopefully in time for people to get some Christmas orders in. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited about kind of having more of a lifestyle aspect of plants, if you will, <laughs> but kind of the accessories to go along with it. Um, and also, I really just love teaching people about plants. And I think that's been a really fun um, opportunity for me is to help people find the perfect plant for their house that maybe don't know a lot yet or don't know what care is going to look like for well, I was going to put this plant here, but that's a dark corner of your house. And this is a, you know, full sun type of plant and that's not going to be happy there. And I'm um, kind of helping people avoid that. Um, well, I've killed 10 plants kind of um, mentality. That I think a lot of people have been trained to have because of that. So. <laughs> what do you think about my succulents? <laughs> They're perfect. <laughs> so low maintenance. <laughs> I hardly ever water them. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> those are awesome. Those are so cool. Another friend um, crocheted those, and I think that's I think that's crocheting. But I I know that there's a thing if you say the wrong word. She made them for me, and she has a shop called Bird and Vine, and they're on instagram and facebook and oh Etsy. cool i'll definitely have to check that out maybe we should have them in the shop here if you can not to not to like uh <laughs> not to like steal some of your clientele away but for the people that kill plants we have some uh, no i'll definitely send them there for sure yeah <laughs> there's and, enough to go around no doubt but no you, you you i mean that it is really a good point that like you go to lowe's and there's like shade sun partly sun and those like all the instruction you get and then there's like 50 bags of fertilizer and you're you know yeah. they're huge and you're like i don't know what to get and then half the time like the plant is some of the leaves are turning brown and stuff so it sounds like what you're offering is like the plant is going to the home with love and care like mm -hmm. provided to it and then you can you're like, kind of a support system too you know i always tell people feel free to reach out if you have questions you know you have my information you know if you're and I love it. You know, I, I, I gave a girl a pothos a few months back and she sent me, you know, photos of a yellowing leaf when it started to be winter time, which is a totally natural kind of hibernation process of plants to lose a few leaves that time of year. And she's like, oh my God, what am I doing wrong? And I was like, nothing, just clip it off and move on with your life. Like, it's going to be good. It's happy, you know, don't worry about it. But I love that. I, mean, I really like, that's what makes me happy doing it. Um, and it's really fun to have a house full of plants that you never thought you would have. I, I love it. I didn't look at it. It's beautiful, <laughs> even behind you. Yeah, this is just like a, a small taste of, here I have a whole cart behind me of things. So, yeah. I might I might be thinking of the wrong name, but I think I have, it's called a devil's ivy. Okay. Yeah, I guess because yeah. it's like hard to kill. I've had that same, I've had that same plant for, I think at least five years now at my house. So oh, wow. and the vines got really, really long. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I left it, I was moving and I left it in the car for too long and it Ooh. basically died on me. So I, I kind of threw it on the floor, like I was going to throw it away. And then after a couple of days, I noticed there were still some green parts on it. So I mm -hmm. trimmed off all the brown. And I mean, it was, it went from 12 foot vines to like seedlings or, you know, saplings. Wow. Yeah. Uh, back to start again yeah i and, think that, and now it's now i've got some 18 inch vines going so wow that's a quick grower <laughs> like good humidity down there <laughs> mm -hmm, totally no but i think that's something really beautiful about plants and i think especially you know just where we are in history and surviving 2020 plants have been such a great you know not and you know whether you believe in energy and frequency i think all living things have that and plants provide such a just a grounding and really 
um, you know, high vibrational energy in your home and you feel that difference having them there, but also they're so resilient and so amazing. And it all, it just is a great kind of way of self care to take care of a plant, um, to have to learn what it needs to survive. And it's not much, um, but if it doesn't get just those basic things, it's not going to do well. And how also starting over isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think, you know, a lot of, it's a great metaphor for a lot of the things we've talked about today that trimming it back and starting again and knowing that that's not a bad thing and that the second time around that plant is going to be hardier, harder to kill. And it's going to, you know, it's going to be that much more steadfast. I always joke with people, you know, that see some of the plants in the house that I have that are my personal plants. And like, how did you get the leaves to be that big? Or how did that plant get to be the size? And I always jokingly, but also kind of seriously tell them, Oh, well, I just try and kill it first. And then if it can survive, it can stay, you know, but it's true. It, like if you kind of give it the very bit of what it needs to survive, it becomes a lot harder year and stronger and comes back and is able to thrive. And I think that's just a really great metaphor for life in general. And there's such a thing as too much love. It's so true. <laughs> Cactuses will teach you that if you need that lesson <laughs> or any succulent really. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally. And uh, we talk, well, we won't, we don't have to go here necessarily, but it is, you know, you, you mentioned connecting yourself back to mother nature and to earth and grounding yourself in mm -hmm. that way. But also with, uh, you know, people working from home and technology, you and I talked about um, some kind of innovations with, you know, you can buy home plant, plant growing kits that like hang on your wall and you put the little pot mm -hmm. in there. And so there's been some interesting innovations with tech and yeah. we don't have to get into specifics, but mm -hmm. you did mention some pretty interesting ideas that can integrate technology and plants, which is like the earliest, you know, plants have been around yeah. way longer than we've been around. So, um, totally. Yeah. But also, you know, to go back to what you said, mother nature knows best. So, um, you know, if we could tap into that infinite wisdom, even just a little bit, you know, things, things are better. Right. Um, no, I think the idea you're probably talking about, and it's, there's, I think I see little pieces of this all over, but there's no one specific tool right now that I'm aware of that has everything in one place of, um, you know, is it getting enough sun? Is the pH balanced? Is it getting enough nutrients? Is it getting enough light? Is it getting enough water? Um, and again, there's all these tools that do that um, here and there. But I think, you know, if we, if there was a way to kind of make that all one app that could help people keep their plants thriving, um, it just would be a great tool to get more people interested in in greenery. And I think too, another thing I love about plants, especially now, and you know, just kind of going through this um, global warming crisis, is that. Uh, if we could just learn to take care of some plants in our house, then it's a great first step to learning to take care of plants and our planet, right? Um, how important is that? So um, if we can just learn that it's not hard and we just have to take care of them and, you know, just look out for them every once in a while, it doesn't have to be our whole lives. We don't have to change our lifestyles for it. Um, we just have to make some simple shifts. So get to recognize the signs of when the plant's not happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. When you're doing too much or too little. <laughs> For sure. So um, how can people find out more about um, building with broads or plant broad? Um, well, by the time this launches, both of those websites will be fully functional and running. So plantbroads.com, no A in broads. Um, and then buildingwithbroads.com as well. And also on Instagram under both of those names. And uh, you can find those links in the podcast description or in the YouTube description below as well. And one more plug on the, on the using of broads because that's kind of a theme throughout my stuff. So I feel like I just have to throw this out there if you'll let me. Of course. Um, but it's my last name, of course. But I've also always loved that it's a term. And like I kind of said in the beginning, I've kind of always found myself working with or for women. Um, and I love that broads has always been an inclusive term for women um, in this day and age. And I think that if that's something you identify, it's a great way to 
be inclusive. If you identify as a woman or abroad or anything in between, you're welcome in my community. And um, that's that's my little broad plug there. <laughs> no A in it though. <laughs> cool. Is there a special any, breed? <laughs> is there um, anything else you want to add uh, before I close out the episode? I think that's it. Uh, um, I guess. Thank you for having me. Thank this you for coming awesome. on. Yeah, and we could chat. Really fun. We could chat a little more after I uh, <laughs> close out. But what I'll do is I'll do a little plug for the episode. Uh, really quick. So upcoming in upcoming episodes of the creative truth, uh, we'll, we'll interview other creative career paths, such as artists, woodworkers, glass blowers, photographers, VFX artists, UX designers, and more open to your suggestion. If you uh, know somebody, you can send us suggestions, uh, either guest suggestions or podcast suggestions. So we create truth at gmail.com. Please don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube if you're watching. And if you're listening, leave us a good review on your favorite podcast platform. You can find more at creative-truth.com. Anna, thank you again for coming on. And thank everyone, you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and it's always a pleasure to talk with you. And you are metaphorically and in this sense, literally for you, a breath, breath of fresh air. So. Uh, <laughs> Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next episode.